worldwide. Let's welcome our panelists today. We are very pleased to welcome political analyst Dr. Susan Boysen, professor at Wits University School of Governance, as well as Professor Mkabi Sindlegiana, professor of political science at the University of Johannesburg. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to both of you. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and of course, with me is our digital producer, Neil Mudlog. Neil, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Alicia. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. What do you have for us on the digital front? We're starting with art insurance this morning. Ah, I mean, the Father's Day ad that they released last week where um, they really? featured... It's very controversial. It's very controversial. Yeah. They featured mostly white fathers who are not even South African and one black um, father. So um, Newsroom asked this tweet, um, this poll, is the advertising industry inherently racist? Because you've seen a number of um, ads that are coming out excluding black people or yeah. portraying them without fathers and stuff. So 75% of the people said yes, and then 25% of the people said no. Mm, so that's quite reasonable. Let's yes. look at the tweets before we mm. get any input from the panelists, because I really want to know what they were saying. They says, we says, hashtag outsurance. If all fellow blacks can just cancel your services from this company, we will never see outsurance ads ever. Mm. I mean, Jeff also echoes the same sentiment, saying, I complain with action outsurance. I just cancelled my policy. Blacks need to get this. Stop with all the talk and just boycott it if you are serious. Mm, well, let's see if other people took any uh, uh, kindly to the matter. Policy cancelled as promised. Ooh, okay. Hashtag yes. outsurance. That is from Maino8583. So very interesting it reviews on, on Twitter as well. But I want to find out from our panelists, uh, uh, Professor Ndekian, what did you think about the ad first of Lee and also the reactions on social media well I think the ad was <clears throat> not uh, well thought out um, I mean to have what nine white white guys and 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 one black guy in an ad is 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 absurd in South Africa of of all places you would have thought perhaps in Europe you, you would expect yeah. that and, and I think people should act out their beliefs. Uh, the reaction that uh, we've had so far is appropriate. Yeah. If people disapprove of something, they should do something, right? Yeah. No, and not, not sit down and complain without doing anything. So our insurance uh, will, will obviously suffer, and they must. They deserve the punishment. Shame, they've already suffered. I mean, we've read three people that have said they've cancelled their policies. Exactly, Professor Poison, yeah. what did you think about this? Yes, it is just a no-go in this day and age. Mm -hmm. There is a much higher social consciousness, consciousness of the residues of, of society that have not been transformed, mm -hmm. and insurance really has to do better than blame it on a relatively junior employee and say it has not been slipped. I think it's a hello situation. Mm -hmm. They... But I think they will, the bottom line for me is they will never put out an advertisement like, like that this, yeah. again. <laughs> Hopefully they've learned their lesson to That's put point, out yeah. more inclusive ads. And just that goes for anybody else as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that the big hula baloo was about the beer ads or the yes. whiskey ads that were actually uh, advertised on Father's Day. But this time it was a different narrative. Mm -hmm. So it shows that people are, are really concerned and paying happening. attention of mm -hmm. what should be happening, particularly in the media space. What what are we looking at now, Neil? Talking about media and social media, we're looking at the social media blackout that was driven by... That was trending. Yes, it was trending. <laughs> but if you look at the graph, um, Alicia, the day it came, the day it was announced, um, you can see it was high, the graph was high, but as, as the day proceeded on the 21st, it yeah. went low and it started trending yeah. again the, the following day on the, on the 23rd. So it did kind of slow down social media, but the whole point was to drive the narrative to business that if we shut down social media, you guys have no business at Let's all. Let's see if people <laughs> took that yes. narrative into account. Spumelele Zondi says, when is the hashtag social media shutdown happening? Mm. When it's the number one trending topic on social media? You know? That's a great <laughs> question, actually. Uh, Umdini says, social, hashtag social media shutdown. Shutting down social media will not bring down the price of data. Only not buying and using data will bring it down. Mm. Let's get the final view there from Tato Radice. It says the social media blackout is not practical. Professor Boysen, did you think it was not practical? Yes, indeed. You know, the big cost, we media, we, data is most expensive is on mobile. Yeah. Mm. And it is, 
it was it was a good public statement to to remind us and to retain that kind of consciousness that data in South Africa is too high. Yeah. And in a, in a country where we have the social disadvantages and unemployment, we have free or virtually free data can yeah. open probably help open many possibilities for mm. people. So it, and South Africa is disproportionately expensive, and so we have to look at where the real costs are and the company the telecom companies need to be challenged specifically on that they taking notes but they are not doing anything about it mm. so it's a good sentiment in the campaign but it is obviously inappropriately targeted all right so we'll view it and that's the way doctor <laughs> professor Ndekan, what do you think <laughs> i think it was a very good action uh, i mean kenya has apparently a much uh, cheaper yeah um, that's true uh, mm. data compared to us and yet we we're supposed to be the biggest uh, economy in the mm -hmm. continent they're yeah. actually so expensive so we should be able to make up for these losses i mean with the eco economy that we have so many subscribers so they can make money really mm. from 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 lower I mean, everybody almost because everybody has a economy in the scale. country yeah exactly yeah. so mm. if, if if one has to speak of white monopoly capital i think this is it <laughs> <laughs> it has to be crushed <laughs> you just had to slip that in there professor <laughs> now let's do this the final one, the final I'm, one is I'm not gonna <laughs> say anything on that one let's look at the final the big final hashtag for this week what secret, are we looking at here what is this poll ballot. all about um the poll asked do you think the speaker of parliament ah, like better, will order a topics, secret ballot yeah. now that the concord has said she has the power to do so um out of the 900 people who voted 17 percent said yes she will while 62 percent said no she won't 18% saying I want a secret ballot and then 2 percent saying I don't want, I don't a want <laughs> yes. <laughs> and any more tweets? Do you have any tweets on this we one? Bongani says, one. do you really think Balegambete will go against Ubab? Mm -hmm. Hashtag secret, secret ballot. ballot. And Jabulo <laughs> saying, echoing the same thing, since Balegambete said she has no problem with the secret ballot, I assume she will order it. Mm -hmm. Any more views here? Muzi says, Balegambete, can you just do us right, please? Hashtag secret ballot. We're going to discuss this in more detail, but Professor Declan, just a quick one on the social media reactions uh, to, this, uh, to the judgment by the Concord. I think people are quite keen to have Parliament do something. Yeah. Mm. There's, a, there's a level of outrage out there in society that Parliament has not exercised its accountability, True. responsibility over the president. So, though, I mean, what, 68% or whatever, you know, so. so Hopefully, Balegambete will heed societal views, but there, you see, these days is very insensitive to popular views. Professor Poison. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. If she can resist social media, she's not also going to resist the president. <laughs> but we do not really know. The pressures are there. Chief Justice Mukwing gave us specific directives, as specific as you can get without doing judicial overreach. Mm. But we know she can probably do this irrational, rational thing and construct a rational, seemingly, by her standards, rational argument and put it in there and win time. It will go to courts. We almost certainly know what a constitutional court would find if she does not order a secret ballot. But she can do that. Hmm. Professor Poison, we're going to get into more detail <laughs> on this topic much later on in the program. Neil, give our viewers the <coughs> URL where they can so, go check out all these stories mm -hmm. and more that you have on the SABC News line. www.sabc forward slash news and also on our Twitter, it's at SABC News Online. All right.